Canada is a big fat Ponzi scheme just waiting to collapse and a very intriguing interview popped up in my feed this morning to help confirm this as fact. Brian Lee Crowley, director of the McDonald Laurier Institute, was interviewed by the National Post and he was asked about what union officials are calling the summer of discontent. I've cut out Brian's top three points from that interview and added some insights. As always, your insights are very important to the discussion, so be sure to add them in the comments. How do you think private sector Canadians, people who work in the private sector, are feeling about this right now? Well, I always think a story tells, uh, tells this better than anything. My wife is part of a new walking group uh, out in the community where we live. And so she went for a walk with a new group of people she'd never met before. And two of them were civil servants. And then during the walk, they started talking about how COVID had been the best thing that had ever happened to them. Uh, they got to work from home and, you know, they could go and walk their dog or play with their kids and, uh, you know, everything, they kept their salaries, everything remained as it was. But there was another woman in the group who listened to this for a few minutes and finally she just stopped dead and she said, you know, my husband and I lost our business because of the COVID lockdown. Yeah. We went into debt, we lost everything. Uh, and I, I, just, I just can't listen to this anymore. And I think there is a lot of truth in that little vignette about how people outside the civil service uh, regard what's happening inside the civil service. This anecdote couldn't possibly be more spot on. You'll never learn more from people than when you see them in their natural state. And I can tell you from experience that you'll get the same input if you were to act as a fly on the wall. Public sector workers in Canada really do live in a bubble. Do you remember the economic crash of 2008? They don't. It affected nothing in their lives thanks to the bubble. And you can be sure that a lot of the strife that you see ordinary Canadians going through right now, they're not feeling any of that. Part of what's going on is there's this psychology in the, in the civil service that, well, everybody's circumstances must be like ours. But the truth of the matter is, that most people's circumstances are not like people who work in the civil service. Uh, you can't phone in your work. If you work in a restaurant or a factory or any of these things, you gotta be there. Yeah. Uh, and so even if uh, from some uh, theoretical point of view, much of the work can be done remotely by civil servants, the fact of the matter is that most Canadians cannot do their work that way and they feel that um, civil servants are being given privileges that are not available to the average Canadian and that makes them very angry. The first thing I want to bring your attention to in that soundbite was the mention of people who work in restaurants. I'm acquainted with several restaurant owners and workers in my region and I can tell you right now that they all hate it when Opsu is planning a strike. Why? because Opsu loves to plan their strikes at restaurants and they're total D-bags about it. From what I've been told, a lot of them don't tip. Regardless of the fact that they're being paid a mint for what they do and those who do tip usually leave fickle amounts. Aside from the tipping problem, they're also notorious for being extremely demanding and exhausting service staff. Funny how that's the type of person asking you to support them in their so-called struggle. There is, in my mind, no doubt that the way the civil service is behaving over this homework issue is creating a sense amongst Canadians that if uh, there is an effort to fix uh, the large borrowing, large scale borrowing that uh, Canada is doing, if um, uh, we have to examine whether we have too many civil servants, people will be okay with that. Yeah. Couldn't agree more with that final point. We're really on the road to a hard fork in voter attitude changes. Once upon a time, supporting unions was just an automatic because you're showing solidarity with people who are being taken advantage of. We're now at a point where it's the public servants who are taking advantage of everyone, that being their employer as well as the very people they're meant to serve. With the job Polyev's gonna have ahead of him once he takes office, don't be surprised if we finally start seeing portions of the Canadian public service being privatized. So how do you feel about public sector unions? Do we still need them? Or is it about time workers in the sector have to live within the same means as the majority? Have your say in the comments. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing.